Hi, everybody. My name is Noelle Ebert, and I am your librarian here at Southwestern. Today, we're going to talk about Academic Search Complete and other EBSCO databases. These are going to be great resources for you when it's time for you to write your research paper for classes. I'm just going to share my screen here, and we are going to look at the Southwestern homepage. If you want to find the library website, check out resources and then go to library. And it's just gonna take a few seconds for the images to load for some of our sub pages. The list of all of our databases that we have access to are going to be found on the where to research page. Here we go. So just click this button and all of the resources we have are just listed in alphabetical order. You can use this menu to skip down the list, but happily, Academic Search Completes really close to the top. You just click the title link here. And bam, we are in. Now, right now I am on campus, so it's not asking me for any kind of login information. It just knows I'm here. But if you are ever off campus, you still have access to these resources. You just need to enter your seven digit ID number. Now, if your ID number is shorter than seven digits, add zeros to the beginning until it's long enough. I'm just gonna share a different screen. And this is what you will see if you are ever trying to log in to the EBSCO databases from off campus. So just type in that ID number here and click sign in. So let's switch back to where we were. Great. And here you can type in any words or phrases of items you're researching. Why don't we look at climate change? The database is also suggesting related words and phrases that might be useful to us. I think this combination of climate change or global warming could play up in our favor. Using words like or, or and, or not, give us different ways to combine or restrict our, our searching, and they can give us even more powerful results. These are called Boolean operators. Let's do a second field. Let's say we were interested in learning about pollution's effect on marine life. So we can type in any combination we want and see what happens. I like to keep my searching simple at first, and that kind of helps me stop from running into a wall or not getting any results. We have a nice little pool of results here, I'm looking at about 900 items. Now, that's still a lot to look through, but one of the useful things about databases are the many ways we can limit our results to get to exactly what we're looking for. Let's check out our limiting options here on the left. The first one I like to do is click this full text box. When I have the full text box clicked, it is only going to show me articles where I can read the whole thing right now. So you can see that cut down our results quite a bit. So if you have an assignment and maybe it's due tomorrow, you might wanna click this full text box because you need to have the information right now. However, if you have a few weeks before your assignment is due, Sometimes it would make sense to not check the full text box. Even if we don't have access to an article, we have the option of ordering it from a different library anywhere across the country. So if you have a little bit of time for those mechanisms to work, let that play out in your favor. But if time's ticking, definitely check this box. It's going to make sure that you can read everything accessible right now. You can also limit your results by references available or peer reviewed. 
So these are going to be kind of your higher level research, peer reviewed, things that have been duplicated, passed over a board of experts in that field, research that takes a while to do and accomplish. You're probably not gonna want every single article in your paper to be peer reviewed, but your teachers are gonna be really impressed if you throw in a couple. So let's just keep that one marked for now. It's also fun to click the references available because if you can find one really excellent article, if you look through its bibliography, you might be able to use some of their sources for research in your paper as well. It's just kind of another way to use all of the resources you have available to you. So that narrowed down our results quite a bit. There are also some other things you can do if you're only interested in a certain date range of information, say the last five or 10 years or so, you can type that in here, or you can use this slider to adjust. And wow, we have really pared down our results here now. There's a few other things that I like to look at on the limiting options on our left. Anytime I see the word subject, I like to take a look at that because it might help me think of other terms and phrases that are related to this search or maybe different ways I should be interpreting things. Let's click this show more link. This is going to pop up all of the other related terms with these few articles that we have left in our results. Maybe instead of marine life, I should have tried marine animals. This really could make a difference in the pool of results that I'm going to turn up. So that is just some of the options you have for limiting the pools of results. Why don't we dive in and take a closer look at one of these? You just need to click the title link and it's going to take you to a page with a little bit more information about this article. You can see where it was published, you can see how long it is, and you can also see other related subject terms that might be worth pursuing if you're trying to find more articles. Most importantly, here you are going to see the abstract for the article. This is a short summary about the, about the article, and you should always, always read this first because it might turn out that this article isn't a good fit, not like you thought from the pool of results we saw. I would rather spend maybe a minute or two reading this little paragraph than waste maybe a half an hour reading the full article and finding out it doesn't fit. So always take advantage of this information on this screen. If we've read our abstract and everything looks good, we can access the full article over here under PDF full text. And it's just going to open up a window. It's just gonna look like any other PDF you've seen before. You have the option to print it or download it to save it for later. You can also read it right here in the database if you want to. Going to go back to the abstract page. And I want to show you a few of the tools we have on the right side. My very favorite one is this citation button. If you click this link, this sub window will pop up and it will give you a citation to include in your bibliography for this article. There are all sorts of different style guides you can look at. You're probably going to be working with APA or MLA right here. So you could just copy and paste this into the end of your Word document and you would have your bibliography started. Now you should always double check, you know, the punctuation, the capitalization. Sometimes the content is correct but the way it presents it isn't. Always double check this with your writing teacher or your writing style guide or the OWL Purdue website has lots of good information about how to properly 
set up your citations in your bibliography. So that was the cite button over here. If you want to come back to this article and look at it later, you can also use this permalink feature. If we click this, a different subwindow is going to pop up, and we can copy and paste this link and get back to this abstract page at a later date. Now, don't save this one up here because we are logged into the database right now. This is randomized. This is going to be different the next time we try to get in here. Always, always, always save the permalink if you want to go back this way. You can also always download these articles to save for later and organize in your own cloud drives or computers. So this is pretty much the basics of academic search complete. I wanna show you one other neat trick. This entire time, we have just been in this one database, but we can search other EBSCO databases at the same time because they're all in the same suite, the same company. If we wanted to expand our search to other databases, click this choose databases link a new window is going to pop up and it will show us all of the different databases we have at access through EBSCO. If we wanted to pick and choose a few databases, maybe throw some eBooks in, for example, you can select them individually. Or if you really wanna go crazy, you can click the choose all, the select all, and we can search 50, 60 databases this, at the same time. Let's see if we get more results searching all of these databases. I think we will. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We got almost 4,000 results here now. So if you're ever having trouble finding information on a topic, you can always think of different words or phrases to describe it or you can try searching in multiple databases. So it's just another kind of technique to help you keep going if you feel like you're hitting a wall. This was just about all that I wanted to share with you today about the EBSCO databases. But if you ever have further questions, you just come by and see us at the library in Tioga too. And if you are a remote user, you can always call an email too. Very happy to make a Zoom appointment or meet you however we can. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.